unpack this a little? I mean, I, I'm surprised to hear that. So let's start with, uh, I mean, if Xi Jinping thinks can't, in what way does he think China is the only sovereign state? Because he's obviously engaging with other global leaders. Yes, he's been pushing the notion that uh, of the Chinese imperial era, that Chinese emperors not only have the mandate of heaven over what they call Tianxia or all under heaven, but that heaven actually compels them to uh, rule the entire world. And his officials have been quite explicit about this. His pronouncements use this Tianxia imagery uh, and they have throughout this century. So it's clear what they do uh, what, and what they're um, the, where they're driving towards. Um, but what has been surprising, as I mentioned, is that they're now talking about the rest of the solar system as being part of the People's Republic. And that is new. And it shows you um, Chinese assertion and uh, how, you know, how we have to defend the global commons. Let's go closer to home than the solar system, which is Taiwan. It's been independent for almost 75 years, you know, essentially since the formation uh, almost of, of communist China. What is it that's different right now about how it's viewing Taiwan or how this has become a more dangerous and sensitive situation? It's become more dangerous because Xi Jinping has created markers for himself by putting time frames on China's annexation of Taiwan. You know, uh, previous Chinese leaders have said Taiwan is part of China. But those guys didn't really mean it or they weren't paying, uh, they weren't trying to, to actually take over Taiwan. Xi Jinping is different. He now says, um, and he's been saying this since he's been China's ruler, that the Taiwan problem, and he calls it a problem, cannot be passed down from generation to generation. And recently Chinese propaganda and Chinese official pronouncements talk about how Taiwan must be taken over in the quote unquote new era. Well, New Era is Xi Jinping speak for the, his time at the top of the Communist Party. So he is putting, um, in a sense, uh, telling the Chinese people that he will do this, which means that every year that passes where Taiwan remains independent, it puts more pressure on him to act. Isn't a stable Taiwan better for the U.S. Um, US, US economy, certainly, but also the Chinese economy, you know, in terms of chip production and all the various other ways in which Taiwan is both integrated into the China supply chain, but also heavily invested in the mainland, too? The, the status quo is, is actually good for the People's Republic. Um, now, um, Xi Jinping would like to take Taiwan intact without firing a shot, which means that China would obviously be stronger because, among other things, China would then dominate the global chip industry. There's one Taiwan company, TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, which makes about 92 percent of the world's made to order chips. In other words, the mm -hmm. most sophisticated semiconductors. So, yeah, he would like that. But uh, he's being unrealistic if he thinks that he can take Taiwan um, intact with, uh, without it being damaged. So if we look at what's happening in the political context right now, I know that there were discussions about this at what's called the Shangri-La Shangri Dialogue in Singapore. We've, um, you know, there's a lot of curiosity as to whether Xi Jinping is going to even come to the APEC summit this year. I mean, can you give us some sense of just how cold the relations are between the U.S. and China on a political level from your experience at this moment in time? Well, there's been a fair amount of communication between senior officials on both sides. So, for instance, the Chinese Commerce Minister came to Washington to speak to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo. Um, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan saw Wang Yi, his counterpart uh, in Europe for uh, basically a two day meeting. Um, CIA director um, William Burns was in Beijing for a secret trip about two weeks ago. And William Burns, our um, Nicholas Burns, I'm sorry, our, our ambassador mm -hmm. to China actually had conversations with uh, Qin Gong, uh, foreign minister. So there's been a lot of communication, but things are still tense because there are elbow differences. 